Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be here. Um, I think Bill's alluded to on many occasions that our region has a unique opportunity to be transformed. The buzz around our city is unique. Um, I've traveled the country and the world, and Pittsburgh is one of the only places that you can actually schedule a meet with the mayor or the county exec and actually meet with them. And so I think at times we don't take a full complement of the opportunities we have, while at the same time there's external pressure on our city to become greater than it, it currently is. If you look at our transformation over the past 40 years, uh, we moved from a rust belt to a brain belt. At that same period of time, and what's notable is that many minorities during that transition um, fled Pittsburgh to other places, Chicago, DC, New York, the West Coast. And so when you consider what Bill spoke to earlier about the emerging opportunities in the sector based upon the inflection point report, by 2025, we're expected to have 85,000 vacant jobs at IT and manufacturing alone. At the same time, there's 90 communities in Allegheny County. 46 are comprised of vulnerable people that look like many people in this room. Of those 46 communities, there's 80,000 vulnerable people. Of the 80,000 vulnerable people, 46,000 of those people are on probation and parole. So as a funder, there's no amount of programming that I can support that would transform the communities and those regions in a way that's meaningful to our sector. When you look at our bottom-up approach that the mayor's initiated, um, our green master plan, the work in our mono site, if you look at our emerging trajectory, you look at our artificial intelligence and robotic sector, you begin to realize that Pittsburgh is at the precipice of a unique transformation. But is it a transformation for all? And so the work that we're pioneering here is critical. I like to be practical. By 2050, 70% of the world's population will be living in the urban corridor. What does that mean? That means that Pittsburgh currently has a housing shortage of 21,000 affordable housing units. What does that mean? That means that there's multiple opportunities for vulnerable people to gain sufficient skills in the workforce to provide sustainable, livable pathways for them and their families. However, there seems to be a, a gap, a problem, a disconnect, with how we actually create pathways to ensure the integrity of our region's growth for all people. There's gonna be $30 trillion invested over the next 30 years, 30 years in housing and redevelopment. There's a need for 75,000 people a year for housing. We need to build our infrastructure and well-being in a way that supports these emerging trends. This transformation is going to happen with or without us. It behooves us to create a condition that we're proactive and not reactive at this particular time. When I took office 18 months ago at the Forest Funds, I did a 100-day listening tour and talked to 1,000 people face to face. I discerned during that conversation that there are seven core components to Pittsburgh's transformation. <laughs> Philanthropy, the citizen, the nonprofit sector, the healthcare sector, government, private business, and the educational sector. If we are going to survive the emerging opportunities in our region, and I mean move from good to great, we have to work in harness and in harmony. And what I found over the past 18 months is we are not working in harmony. And so those of you sitting in this room to see this event as a process to transform your work in the region's ability to succeed in our, towards our global economy, how must we begin to work differently together? How must we begin to consider what our analysis of that work looks like? At the Forest Funds, we froze our assets the first two quarters when I came into office. We rejigged our grant-making process, looked at a cluster process. Um, we looked at our staff. And over the last four quarters, our average grants went in Q1 to 1.3 organizations in 2017. In 2018, it went to 1.9. In Q1 to 2019, it went to 4.0. In Q2, it went to 5.0. 
At the same time, we've decreased our grants per organization by $3,000. So we've created a new curve and process by which to maximize and optimize our grant making process while also reducing our costs. This is happening because of strategic collaborations, working across sectoral frameworks. At the same time, we created a 200 member cross sectoral advisory group that's comprised of 15 subcommittees that's led by two content experts. All of these things are about creating linkages and relationships that ensure the integrity of investments already made. Six, six months ago, my board approved one of the first grants ever awarded and will be awarded by the Forbes Funds called the Catalytic Community Cohort, or C3 model. It's transformational. It's about creating opportunities for vulnerable communities and leaders to be transformed by high-performing leaders in this sector. So we're working with organizations that have $3 million or less and annual budgets being mentored by organizations with $40 million or more in the same atmosphere, the same ecosystem. The goal is to optimize the region's ability to resolve social phenomena, phenomena by strategically collaborating. Concurrently, we're working with UXER to create a macro level analysis of our work through a dashboard. All of this is to really move beyond the conversation that we have had over the past 40 years in Pittsburgh about transformation and really analyzing our work both at the qualitative and quantitative level. And so I stand before you today humble to be able to speak to you, but honored at the same time. As Bill alluded to, our GDP was 37% between 2015, 2012 to 2015, something like that. And, now, and that was in oil and gas. And today, up to 2022, it's expected to be 2.8 in that same sector. Is that? So when we look at the arc of where our emerging opportunities exist, we also know that in the 10 counties around our community, we graduate 40,000 kids every year. 20,000 of them leave upon graduation. So we're losing talent as well. So everybody in this room has a, a moral obligation, an opportunity to be part of our transformation, to be part of our evolution. And today, I just want to share with you that the Forest Fund is open and willing to communicate with all people about those opportunities. We're looking at corporate and, and um, private and nonprofit partnerships that really galvanize our region in a systemic way. And our work with UXER and the University of Pittsburgh and Penn State will be transformational. So I want to thank you guys. I look forward to hearing your questions. Uh, God bless. Thank you.